Hey, this is Matt with House of Vacuums, and uh, let's say that you bought the Shark Vertex cordless with power fins prior to watching my video review, which is entirely possible because my video review came out a year after the machine did. So let's say that you bought that and now you need to know how to maintain it. Then this video is for you. Let's check it out. All right, so let's start with the motor unit itself. And you'll have to excuse me if I sound a little congested. I'm dealing with some allergies. So the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that underneath this platform is clear as well as your um, as well as your seal right here. So both of those can be cleaned and wiped um, down with a damp microfiber. The second thing that you'll want to make sure of is that your mesh grate right here. This is a filter prior to your motor. It's your first stage of filtration to get coarse materials out of the filters. So this here needs to remain clean. So you need to check this on a frequent basis. I would say check it every time you dump the cup and you will need to go down in here and pick dirt out because this is not removable. So you can use either a pair of, you can use your fingers, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers, you could use a pair of tweezers, doesn't matter as long as you get that clean. Sometimes a dry toothbrush is very good at cleaning those grates off. It'll kind of lift and pull the dirt away. All right, so if we press this button here, now we have access to the filters. Let's talk about these. These are designed to be washed. The thing with these is that Shark recommends, I believe on this unit to wash these every three months um, is what they recommend. I would say three months is a very, very minimum. For most people who are using this on a frequent basis, if you have kids, if you have shedding pets, if you have a dusty area, you're gonna wanna clean this more frequently. I would say every two months, if not every month, you're gonna wanna clean this because this is this amount of dirt is what I got after using the vacuum just a handful of times in my own house. And I didn't like the machine, so I didn't use it a ton. And this is what it ended up with. So you can see the staining here. Now Shark recommends that you do not use soap on these um, because it says that it leaves a residue which will attract dirt back to it, which is probably true if you're talking about dish or hand soap. However, I do recommend using a high quality degreaser, whether that is Simple Green or the degreaser that you can get in the gallons from Sam's Club, the member's Mark brand. Um, in either case, something that is designed to rinse clean but will also take this out of this dense foam. That's what I would recommend because it does rinse clean. You're just going to want to rinse it very well until there are no more suds coming out of this uh, filter. And you'll want to wash this in the same manner. Now let's talk about these intake ports. You can wipe this area down. There's no reason to take out these screws and get down inside here. Um, these ports are just the intakes from your cones. You want to keep your cone clean, keep this wiped out, and keep these filters clean. And you shouldn't need to get down inside of these um intake ports. Foam filter goes first, then your media filter with the tab pointing out. Now let's talk about charging. I apologize. I've got some marks around here because I did take this battery apart. If you want to see that, you can check right up here and that will show you um, the video where I reviewed this. Charge ports here on the back, as you know, if you already own this, and this is the charger. Now, you do not want to overcharge this, meaning that you don't want to leave this sitting on the charger, constantly plugged in, supplied with power. Why? Because that stresses out both the cells and the circuit board. It means that the machine is constantly having to monitor that input. It monitors the cells, monitors the voltage coming in. It'll top off the cells, back off, top off the cells, back off. It's just very hard on both the cells and the circuit board. So if you want to maintain the longevity of your lithium ion battery, do not leave it on the charger. What I would do is vacuum the vacuum with this like you normally would. And when you get done, however much is left here on your um, on your bar, go ahead and plug it in and charge it and keep an eye on it. Whenever that light turns off, that time span will give you an idea of how long it needs to be charged after a typical usage in your home. Each time after that, go ahead and plug it in and get a smart plug, whether that's from Casa or Wise, or there's a bunch of different other smart plug manufacturers out there. Go ahead and get one of those and set it up to charge only for the amount of time that it takes to top off your battery. Um, and that will save 
quite a bit of headaches in the future. It is not a guarantee. Batteries, they tend to be a little bit more finicky than mains power. It just is how it goes. But this is the best prevention that you can do to make sure that your battery lasts longer. Next up, we have your wand and your nozzle. Now, if your vacuum is ever not picking up, you're gonna to wanna to start checking the filters, including that metal grate. But one of the most common areas to clog on this, and I know this from personal experience, because in the short time that I owned this machine, I managed to clog this three times, is right here at the neck. So if we bend this out, and pull this out, this hose that allows the wand to bend down is a smaller diameter than the rest of the wand. So what that means is that if you pick something up that makes it through the wand, it may not make it past this hose. So you wanna double check this and make sure that you can see daylight through here. You're gonna to wanna to pull this out right here using the button lock and make sure that you can see daylight down through here. If not, you can use a coat hanger, a hook, maybe a long pair of needle nose to pull the plug out of there. But usually when it happened to me, I could readily see it right here in this flexible hose because that's where it was attracted to. Before we move on to the next section though, I wanted to take a second to ask if you find this entertaining or helpful, go ahead and give us a clickety clack of that like button. It helps us out so much. That's the only thing that I ask of you. Just give us a clickety clack and we are good to go. Thanks. Now onto your nozzle. So on this guy here, what we're going to want to do is we tab this little button right here and you push this and pull this out. On the um, Duo Clean machines, this tends to get gunked up with a lot of junk that gets caught between this roller and the housing itself. So you're going to want to go ahead and wipe that out. Clorox wipe or something like that. You can also use a microfiber towel, a damp microfiber towel will work as well. Clean off this comb, clean off the gunk that's down here inside the housing. As for this, this does need to be cleaned. You'll notice over time, this is gonna turn a different color. It's gonna get dingy and brown. I had one of these in orange and it's now kind of like a dark orange. Um, so what you can do with these is you can actually wash these. I would keep this end out of like standing water, but you can go ahead and hose this off in a sink. You can scrub it with some degreaser real good with a toothbrush, again, don't submerge this part, but then rinse it all the way until there's no more soap falling off of it. And then go ahead and let this dry for a minimum of 24 hours. Um, it should be absolutely bone dry to the touch. And then you can go ahead and reinstall it. But you're gonna wanna do this because this brush is constantly touching your floor. It's constantly just rubbing over it. And if you have a dirty, nasty brush and it's just constantly running over your floor. I mean, that's just that's kind of gross, kind of defeats the purpose. So clean this guy. The second thing that you want to do, and I think that we already have some debris in here, is you can take a small screwdriver and just pry up on these wheels. So you can see right there, I already have some fuzz. That's after very minimal usage. We've got a little fiber washer on this side, but you also need to separate this from the hair that will accumulate on that side as well. There you go right there. Yep. So keep these clean. This is a little velvet covered brush. Uh, this is a little velvet covered wheel meant to be non-scratch. But if you get dirt bound up in here, then you're gonna basically just be skittering across the floor. It's not gonna turn, it's just gonna stay flat. And you'll wear through and create a flat spot on this and eventually it'll make the machine harder to push, harder to maneuver, and you run the risk of wearing these down so far that your base starts to come in contact with your floor, which is what you do not want. To put this guy back in, you simply take it like that and just give the screwdriver a smack. There you go, heard it click, do it on the other side. Maybe we need a little bit of, there we go. Use this as a tool, don't use this. Uh, <laughs> All right, so keep those guys clean. The next thing that you need to keep clean is going to be your, um, your rear squeegee. So to get to this guy, what you're gonna do is take a flathead screwdriver or alternately a coin will also work. Turn this about a quarter turn for all three of these. And then what'll happen is you gra grasp right here and pull this up. 
it may be stuck a little bit. As dirt gets into these crevices, it can be harder to remove. So if it is, then, you know, just work at it. Um, so basically you pull up and then out and what it'll do is it'll come out on this track. You can see already all of the dirt that's in here that needs cleaned out. So you can vacuum that up, wipe it out with a microfiber, call it good. You can also wash this again using a light degreaser um, and running it under some water and letting it dry for a minimum of 24 hours afterwards. To get this back in, what you'll do is you'll push this back in underneath the track. Keep this end as you're going through underneath the guides and push it all the way in until you hear it click. And now this is ready to go again. In addition, here's your brush roll. Now this is gonna need wiped off occasionally. You can already see how dirty these uh, fins are. Um, on top of that, you can see here where there's tearing starting on this power fin. That will become worse with time. And you'll notice that fin the fins will start to wear down and they'll start to tear. When that happens, you're going to notice that hair will start to accumulate on the machine again. Even though it is a zero M machine, meaning that it's supposed to take care of the hair for you, this will not do that once these power fins start to go out. So you want to keep this clear of dirt and hair. You'll want to wipe it off and keep this clean, particularly keeping hair out of the ends because this is a sealed brush roll, meaning that you cannot get in here and service the bearings. So once hair gets wrapped in there, it's toast. You cannot buy the brush roll by itself. You have to buy a whole new nozzle head for a hundred bucks. So you want to make sure um, that you are keeping this clean if you are starting to accumulate dirt. You can also check your port right here to make sure it's not clogged. You should be able to see daylight if we shine a light down here. See, I can see the flashlight right there. So you can check that as well for any clogs. The last thing that I want to teach you how to do is how to check your belt. So if your brush roll is not turning, there's a really good chance that it's the circuit board. These like to go out. So the PCBs that control, uh, they are the power buck for the um, headlights and for the motor. And these like to go out. But alternately, you can double check the belt as well. So if you turn this and you see this moving and you do not see any teeth missing from the geared belt, that means that your belt is in good condition. You can go around once until you see the lettering come back around again. There we go. Um, and we know that that's in good condition. If it's not running and the lights are not coming on, it's a really good indication that it's probably your board. If your lights are coming on, you hear the motor, but the brush isn't turning, then it's something else. If you see this turning, but not this, that means the other belt, the power takeoff belt over here, which takes power from this brush roll and moves it over to the duo clean brush, that could be broken. In that case, that requires taking the whole nozzle apart. And I'd recommend that you take this to a professional to be looked at. To reassemble, we just go ahead and click this guy in here. And we're going to go ahead and do a quarter turn each spot. For our duo clean brush, we're gonna go ahead and take the index side and put it right there. And then we are going to take this front section and pop it back until it clicks. Now it should not be removable. Keep this uh, area clean as well, cause that helps squeegee it off. And that is how you take care of your Shark Vertex Cordless Duo Clean Power Fins. So hopefully this helps you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.